Welcome everybody to another episode of the You Are Happy Show with Melanie Rakirka. Um, we have a great guest today, uh, Christy Walter, who we met through the Happy Neighborhood Project. Uh, so uh, we're going to be talking all about mental wellness, wellness today. So as for you, Melanie, let's, what are we going to talk about today? Well, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm actually joining you from my car today. It's a super busy day, but there's no reason why you can't do um, talk about mental wellness from anywhere at any time. It's all around you. So for those who don't know, I am a mental wellness coach, and uh, my name is Melanie. I'm a brand partner with the Mari Global. We sell mental wellness supplements. But today, I have a super exciting person here with me today, um, Chrissy Walters. Chrissy, you are came from a place where you are constantly surrounded in emergency medicine with people with mental wellness issues and way beyond that. But then I was reading that you do something about with depression. So did you you left emergency medicine, correct? And now you deal with Okay, so I didn't exactly <laughs> totally leave emergency medicine. I still am an emergency medicine physician. But I have uh, transitioned to doing traveling uh, work. So I, I work as a travel physician so that I can have more time to dedicate to my business as a life coach, helping specifically people with anxiety and depression. I, I love it. I love it. So you travel. Where are you at right now? Actually, I'm home at the moment, but I've been bouncing back between Pensacola, Florida and a place called Nevada, Missouri and also a place in Ohio. And so everywhere in between, depending on who needs me, when they need me and what my availability is. And Christy, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Oh yeah, Georgia. right yes. on. Yes, you said this. I said, you said Missouri. I'm like, okay, Missouri, I got it. <laughs> okay, so what brought you from, into life coaching from emergency medicine? I'm a former EMT. So I understand the urgentness of emergency medicine, how you have to think very quickly on your toes, how you're always going back and forth. It's just huge problem that you have to solve. Um, what brought you into more of the life coaching basis uh, from, from emergency medicine life coaching? Sure. So my life has kind of come full circle. Um, my, my exit out of college was fraught with my first bout of major depression. So I got sidelined instead of going off to medical school, which was the intent. Um, I didn't feel like I was ready or had the mindset to do so. So I actually thought I'm going to go ahead and fix myself. So I got a, count, a degree in counseling psychology and was a therapist for a couple of years. I worked in a crisis center for hospice, Vietnam veterans of San Diego, um, until I felt strong enough myself to go to medical school. And I became an emergency medicine physician, practiced 20, it's been 22 years now in medicine. And um, throughout the course of my adulthood, uh, starting in college on, I've had kind of ongoing myself struggles with anxiety and depression, um, kind of lived in this low level, um, dysthymic, life was not pleasurable kind of state with bouts of major depression where, you know, it was suicidally depressed and often sidelined, fraught also with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, anxiety. And so my struggles lasted for decades. And I knew that I didn't want other people to suffer for as long or as, as hard as I did. And I knew at some point I wanted somehow to take everything that I had ever learned professionally and everything that had ever benefited me personally and put it together in a concise program to help other people. And that's how this kind of came, came to, to be. Um, I had uh, an episode that was very uh, significant in 2019 that kind of sidelined me in terms of depression. And during that time, I really had time to reflect because I had broken my shoulder and my foot. And so I couldn't hide in medicine. Um, I used my work a lot to kind of stay one step in front of the depression and the anxiety. But when I got sidelined and couldn't work, the depression came on full, full, full bore. Um, and during that time I was out of work, I had time to reflect and decide, you know, what do I want my life to look like? Cause I knew I couldn't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. It wasn't working. Um, I, I felt hopeless, helpless. Um, and I decided that I wanted freedom 
And what freedom meant for me was no debt, no guilt, and more time. And so I made inroads in paying down or off my student loan. I decided it was no longer going to be uh, influenced by guilt. I wasn't going to let my decisions be influenced by people pleasing, but really what was going to be good in terms of self-restoration. And in that exploration, the program I developed just kind of unfolded. Everything, like I said, it ever worked for me that I learned. Um, I started to uh, put into practice on myself. Um, I garnered some beta clients, if you would. And as I was working with them, the program literally unfolded. And I created a, a course, took me a year to do it, um, that addresses anxiety and depression with high yield action steps that you can implement from day one. And that was something that was missing for me because I went and did all the counseling and the self-help and never really felt like I could pivot. Um, I still was struggling and suffering and, and and not able to stop the, the low self-esteem, the self-defeating patterns. And so I knew there was a better way and I used it on myself and I created a program out of it. So I absolutely love this and let me explain why. I, we have kind of similar stories. Of course, you were way advanced in, the, in medical and um, because of your position compared to I am, I was in athletic training. I have personal trainer, corrective exercise, specialized um, for kids. So the reason this touched my heart, like I said, I was the same way. I was always moving. And my movement was a way for me to um, manage my anxiety, right? And manage my stress. I moved down here four years ago um, and I was diagnosed with scoliosis. I, my SI joint kept going out all the time. And then I sprained my, I had um, four ribs pop out in my left shoulder. I had an ankle sprain of the opposite and my movement totally stopped. I couldn't do anything any longer. And, um, I was, I was with a different company at the time that did not deal with stress anxiety, but they're one of those companies that say our product takes care of everything, and it didn't. So that's why I found the Mari Global. And when I came out of the brain fog and depression that I was in, um, I realized that two out of my four kids were thinking about committing suicide, and I couldn't see it. So I am extremely thankful for programs and people like you, because um, there is still like a mental lingering, no matter if you're taking a supplementation like we have that is probably one of the curious ones that you could ever find um, out there, you still have a lingering and there's still triggers and there's still um, stuff that can switch you backwards in the matter of seconds. And then all of a sudden you find yourself back to where, where you were and there's nothing that you can do about it. And as a mental wellness coach, that's why I love connecting because I am not capable of doing what you are doing. Um, we are not supposed to be given advice. So we have to find that can give them advice and coaching programs that we can ex expand on um, and help out. I can help out with supplements. I can give you ideas, but I can't go beyond that. And that's when they need to talk with different people. It is not shameful to talk. It is not shameful to cry. Right. It is not shameful to express anger in a healthy way. It is it the shame that I'm guessing we're within, I'm guessing within five to ten years of each other in age. And uh, I'm 48. So that's, I'm kind of, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but in my generation, we were taught that suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. You were not to talk about that. Actually, I think I was pretty much punished if I expressed any form of anger or um, guilt or anything along that, which led to now, I'm going to say now, because it's more free now, right? Because we can express ourselves a little bit more to learning to deal with that and learning to coming out of a room when I used to, when I had, when I used to barricade myself for hours because I didn't know how to deal with it. You weren't supposed to talk to anybody because that wasn't something that you did. Um, does that kind of make sense? Yes, 
Yes, totally. I, I think um, that has been the messaging for quite some time in terms of mental wellness is don't talk about, don't talk about it, you know, suck it up, buttercup and get over it. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and stop feeling that way. You know, or, or the other thing I know I've heard is you have everything you could possibly want. You have no reason to feel bad. Oh, my favorite one recently that I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't want to hear that again. It's just breathe. <laughs> Right. It's, you know, breath work does help, but that when you're in that state of almost not being able to see anybody else in the room. And from what I, what you were telling me, I think you kind of understand it because, you know, I, when I get, got to that state, I couldn't see anybody else. In the room. Everybody was, in, I couldn't um, cope or deal with anything that, that was coming, coming at me. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, but it's, and then to see my, my kids and I wonder, you know, they have depression, anxiety issues. Oh my gosh, did I do this to them? You know, but there's one thing that I do want to discuss. And I think that the, it needs to really um, be out there. And the difference is between what I do and what you do. Because I want to strongly, because there are people out there that think that they can do absolutely everything. Right. There are people out there that, you know, I, I partnered with a supplement company, right? And they 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 supplement to take care of everything. No, it does not. Right. It might open <laughs> yeah, I love the smile. I love the smile. It might open up your mind. And that was my whole thing is I wanted my kids, my brain and gut to start communicating enough where they could ask for help and they need it. Mm -hmm. Um, what I do is guide people through different things they can, they can do and then send them on to somebody else, which I think needs to happen. Um, because you have techniques in your back pocket, you are clinically trained for this and going through an 18 hour coaching program, you are not necessarily trained and I might get myself in trouble with this, but that's okay, right? put myself out there, you are not necessarily trained to handle situations and we are not to give advice. That makes sense. Right. Um, something popped in my head and then it just popped out and I want to point, another point I wanted to get across. <laughs> so uh, I would love to hear, so we'll, we'll do kind of a scenario maybe. Okay. of something I have come across and then how you would help. So then maybe they can get a little gist and I'll just use my, my situations that I have come across in the past. And then maybe you will get a little gist of how you would handle. Okay. Sure. So I had, a, I had a, a day where everything in the world hit me. Okay. I had a chipped windshield. I had a, one of my children called and they, uh, Katie dislocated her shoulder, right? I had another one called crying because they were having, she's autism, and they were having an episode with, with autism. And then another kid was asking for a credit card, another kid was asking to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I did everything that I knew how to do, right? I took the supplement, the ashwagandha, everything that was supposed to come down could not come from that high state sure. down. So I found myself going backwards, locking myself in the room, um, not wanting to talk to people, leaving my phone outside the room, shutting the entire room out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would you be able to coach me, help me, help me move, move forward and not keep reverting back to what I know, which is that, so that room by what you're describing to me sounds like a really good example of being hijacked by the amygdala, part of the e emotional primitive part of the brain. You were um, experiencing a stress response. And what happens when we're exposed to stressors, and it, it can be a little stressor or a big stressor, it doesn't matter. The point is it has the same physiologic effect on the body. What happens, it kicks in the fight or flight response. So the, uh, the brain, um, the hypothalamus part of the brain, 
uh, sends uh, hormones to the pituitary, which then sends signals to the adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidneys. And then that adrenal gland releases norepinephrine, epinephrine, cortisol. Um, it's also responsible for fluid balance. It, it secretes uh, glucocorticoid hormones, and um, it can also be responsible for secondary sex hormone uh, response. But when you're in a fight or flight state, you're in that epinephrine, norepinephrine, flood the body with these chemicals so you can flee the situation. Um, because our brain doesn't know the difference between being chased by a tiger or getting bad news on the phone about you know, the shoulder being dislocated of your child. It, it's the same response. And so it puts you into this heightened state of fight or flight. And when you're in that mode, it's very hard to think because you're in that emotional state. And the, um, the part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, cortex part of the brain that allows for rational thinking and creative problem solving goes offline. Um, and you're, you're inundated and, and overtaken by the emotional part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain. And so it makes sense to me that um, taking the supplements was a partial solution, but not complete, because the supplements um, are useful in the sense that, for example, the ashwagandha that you mentioned, it helps to um, reestablish normal uh, adrenal function and to reestablish and normalize the cortisol levels and what have you. But for an immediate response, that's going to take a little bit of time. For immediate response, you need to have an outlet where you can, um, I like to say, you know, dump the stress in order to be able to then re-engage your rational mind and to pivot. And so I have multiple tools in my tool bag, but for example, um, a tool that I may have pulled out in a, in a moment like that. In fact, a tool that I'll use myself as an example, um, and I'll tie it back into your question in a, in a second. So I was in the emergency department this one day. It was early morning. There was two of us on, myself and my colleague. And typically at this time of the day, it wasn't it, not typically busy, um, but it happened to be one of those busy mornings where there are already 30 plus people in the waiting room and the, the rooms were filling up rapidly. So I signed up for three patients just right off the bat. And I went into my first room and I wasn't expecting what was there. Um, I sat down, I, you know, asked, you know, what brought that person in that day. And lo and behold, she begins to tell me about a sexual assault that she experienced. Well, in a half a second, um, it tripped a trigger in me because I didn't have, I didn't have the tools in place that I do now. And I hadn't done enough sufficient uh, work on my own limbic system, my own fight or flight response uh, in a productive way. So it immediately triggered me. I started, the heart rate went up, the sweating, the, the you know, the, the mind going numb, um, not being able to think straight. I had to actually take myself out of the room, excuse myself, went into a bathroom that was adjacent to that particular uh, room. And I laid on the floor in the emergency department in this bathroom, having full on post-traumatic stress flashback. Right then and there, right there at work. And I was overtaken by the anxiety and, uh, and it seemed like it lasted forever. Um, I pulled myself together as best as I could. I went uh, into the area where we do our charting and my colleague was there. He's like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? What just happened? I said, I had this patient. I started to explain the situation that I was triggering. He goes, hold on right there. You have five minutes to pull it together. You know, and he was right. You know, there was nobody coming to rescue me. Um, we had a full ER and I needed to function. And so this tool that I've since refined, I pulled out a piece of paper and a pen and I just started brain dumping. I gave myself two minutes to just brain dump, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening and all the things that were going through my head. And then at two minutes, I hard stopped. I said, okay, I realize I'm feeling anxious, overwhelmed, fragile. I need to pivot right now. And so I intentionally pivoted to my intention of being focused and calm. And in that letting the uh, negativity out, pivoting and refocusing, and then taking one action in that direction. And that one action was to drink some water and take some deep breathing, do some deep breathing, um, intentional breathing for a full minute so I could kick in my parasympathetic, the calming nervous, nervous system. So it was a stacked intervention. You know, it was the dump, the intention, and then the breathing. That was enough to put me back together so I could get on with my workday and go back in and take care of my patients. 
So that's just one little example. Um, I hope that pulled it back together. So in, in your in your situation, you took your supplements, which which are great. Then having some tools like that where you can dump and pivot um, might have been helpful. And so so that, when they so as a coach, when you're in the middle of that, are you available for them to are you available to them to remind them? Because sometimes you you know what you do what you need to do, but the reminder needs to be there. So um, yes, I am available, but I'm not always available. So I, I really okay. try have tried to build into my program a lot of um, self direction, and there's access from day one to all the materials. And very early on, we work on these techniques so that you can go back at any time, re-listen to a video, pull down the homework, um, and practice the exercises. And and I've created it in such a way that we learn how to regulate emotion. We learn how to set a vision and values for our, our values and vision for our life. And we get to the point then when we can process trauma, move on to community, gratitude, and other subjects that, that I've covered. So um, it's kind of a self-contained uh, process, if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just know that, and I, I obviously you, you've been there too, what you just said that sometimes you get into that, that panic but what you're saying is the coaching process with you you'll automatically know what to do yeah when something, something hits you know exactly and there's like multiple sticker, tools sticker in, the in your brain that pops up that says go to your your file or whatever that i yeah say. and one of the things i i'm intentional about is having people practice the tools before they need them okay good because it takes 60 days to create a new neural pathway in our brain. So our default is gonna be whatever we've been doing so far. So we need to create a new default mechanism for our, our brain template. And so these exercises are meant to be done repetitively because it takes 60 days to create a new pathway. And that new pathway is a baby pathway. So it's gonna take time for, for that new pathway, that new way of coping and being to become the norm. I, I love it. Yeah. So Christy, how would we get in touch with you if we want to do some coaching? Sure. Um, I can write it in the chat and I'll also say it. Um, it's, it's a w, 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 no, dog, go ahead. dog gone depression.com. I love it. And my suggestion while I'm finishing up talking is to, to rename your, your name right now and put your website on how they can get in contact with you. And then they don't have to go back to a chat. They can just um, oh. take a snapshot. They can take a snapshot of um, right, you know, right now, what's you know, the picture right now of what is going on, or they can, exactly. of course, it'll be, um, do you know how to rename your, your picture on, on um, Zoom? No. No, it's okay. We'll go over that, we'll go over that later. <laughs> so we will put it below in the chat if you, um, when this is reposted. So when you repost this on, on your page, I'll repost it on mine. I will make sure that I post below in the chat where you can um, get a hold of Christy. And um, so if you need to find me or like to find me, you can always find me at you. The letter U, letter R, happygirl.com if you want to explore any um, of the supplementations that we have. And then, of course, explore the uh, coaching with Christy because she has a lot of, it was very interesting. You said a lot of great, great things in there. And I truly love how it came from a place of already have gone through such um, trauma and experiences in your life that where you were forced, just like I was forced, we were forced to find something that would help us or it would have been life altering and maybe even stopping and taking our lives in a different direction than uh, we are today. So it was an absolute pleasure to have you on. I am so thankful that we got to, to stay and I look hard to connect with you for you in the future. Thank so you. Thank and you if so much, anybody Christine. wants some free tips, uh, you can download on my website the five tips to feeling better today. 
and uh, you can you know, see what else is in there that might be helpful for you. I'll do even better. I will post it on my social media. I'll go in and um, grab them off there and then um, post it on my Instagram and my Facebook pages. Okay. And um, that, well, no, I'll make sure it's, they know it's from you. I'll make sure they know it's, it's from you. I'm, I'm, Thank you. I'm Thank big you. into cool. that. I'll big into that. I'm not going to take ownership of it. And so then they can uh, get to know you better. Awesome. Thank All you, right. Mooney. You're welcome. And um, hold on tight. They're going to stop the recordings for us. And um, everybody have a great day. And until next time. Thanks, Melanie. You're welcome.